hi, I'm Vahid Razavi with BizCloud. Um, I'm here with Don Liswin from uh, Cannery Foundation. Don, thank you so much for having us at your house this afternoon. Uh, this was a follow-up to the C100 uh, Canadian uh, Entrepreneurs Event in the Bay Area, and I just wanted to get your take on it. What is the C100? Could you tell us a little about it? Well, C100 is a group that's been organized in the last five years of executives who are Canadian, who live down in Silicon Valley, to try to promote the interaction between Canada and U.S., in, particularly in high tech. Wonderful. So in regards, is, is it sponsored by the uh, government of Canada, or is it pretty much an initiative run by the folks in Silicon Valley uh, trying to reach out to Canadian businesses? Right. So the C100 was started by a couple of co-founders locally here and just built charter membership where we all contribute to get going. So it, it was not a government-sponsored initiative, but now, as you can see today from the event, the government has become involved, and it's a growing initiative to connect the two countries in high tech. Wonderful. And in terms of the event itself, I noticed that during the day you had a number of closed sessions or presenters. What takes place? Could you give people that have not attended a C100 event kind of an overview of, of what takes place? Well, it's really developed over the last four years as we've had these events. And this year there were CEO mentorship events where CEOs from the past or former came in and gave overviews on how to deal with venture capitalists, how to deal with the marketplaces, and sort of the variance of this cross-border phenomena. And uh, for the first time this year, 25 of the top CEOs from the biggest growth companies in Canada were invited down. So it continues to be a growing event. And instead of just networking, which was the prime directive, now it's a mentorship, some learning skills, as well as that uh, going forward. Wonderful. Now, a lot of people don't know the involvement of Canadian entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. Could you maybe talk about the, some of the technologies that are being developed in Silicon Valley and the companies and, and founders that are Canadian and what they're working on, the types of projects? You don't have to get specific. but No, but I, the best example for me are, is I am now on the board of two Canadian companies, so the other direction, which I think is meaningful. Uh, I'm on the board of a company called Genologics that does next-gen sequencing workflow software. So next generation sequencing is becoming a very hot item. You might want to get sequenced to see if you might get a disease. If you do get sick, most hospitals are now sequencing you. And this is software that helps those hospitals and the research labs deal with that. It's a company based out of Victoria in British Columbia in Canada. Another one I'm involved with is Teradici, is a, a company that does virtualization. So you've heard of virtualization for the data center. Well, now the desktop's becoming virtualized, mm -hmm. and they're the worldwide leader in that. Haven't been heard of yet because we've kind of been quiet and in the OEM business, but that's another one that's very powerful. So my personal experience has been about reaching back into Canada, coming on those boards, and, and I'm an investor in both of them uh, and on the board of both of them. Wonderful. Now, what would you say are the benefits? If I am a Canadian uh, business owner and I'm in Canada today for reaching out to Silicon Valley or vice versa, if I'm a Silicon Valley entrepreneur and I want to expand my footprint to Canada, how could the C100 help me in that process? Well, one way I think of, of my homeland in Canada is it, it's this incredibly well-educated entrepreneurial place which is as big as Texas and as big as California. And so if you live down here and you ignored those states in your process, you'd be totally silly. So there's this great opportunity to do this with the Canadians. Um, so, you know, I think that, that you just have to say it's a North American play and uh, the Canadian friends bring maybe a kinder and gentler angle to some of the things which we're trying to get out of them, but it just expands your market and uh, there's terrific talent and where there's talent, there's opportunity and that's where you should go. Absolutely. Besides the talent and opportunity, you do a lot of work around uh, medical research, especially in the area of cancer, some, something that strikes a quarter of the world population probably in, in terms of numbers and my own father was struck with it. So. Um, 
I would love to know about what the Canary Foundation is all about and what the kind of work that you're doing in that regard. So the Canary Foundation is a project I started um, after my mother passed of ovarian cancer. That's and right. she uh, was living in Vancouver at the time and was sadly misdiagnosed uh, with a bladder infection and given antibiotics for what was late stage cancer. And of course she died as a result of that misdiagnosis. And I was really angry at the time, but I came to understand that it happens all the time. Doctors don't have the tools. Uh, so as you do the research, you learn a simple idea that if you find cancer early, surgery is curative nine times out of 10. Wow. And if you find it late, you die nine times out of 10. But there's no money in early detection because the diagnostics business is terrible right now and the therapeutic drug business is awesome. So everyone goes in that. So the philanthropic effort is in trying to stimulate and build an industry around early detection. And the vision for that is straightforward. A blood test annually that you go, you get your cholesterol test. Well, you have our cancer panel test tests you for 12 cancers and if that panel test is positive we're going to send you to an advanced imaging test which will isolate it which will allow a surgeon to go yeah it's there i'm going to cut it out wonderful don now i'm just would this be something that would be available to the masses or what would be the price for this kind of a product offering in terms of a cancer test certainly the goal is to have it everywhere but like any new technology, there's always an insertion point. Right. That, and the insertion point for, for these tests, which we're beginning to emerge this decade, will be high-risk communities. So what are those? Well, if, you, if your family has a lot of cancer, you're probably high risk. Um, for me, I'm 54. Now I'm high risk of colon cancer. My dad had it. I'm past that. So I got to get tested for colon cancer, right? As the genetic testing gets better and better, you will start to get genetic markers that will tell you you might be at high risk. So that's where we'll likely start because the high risk communities sadly will get more cancer and the economics will work better. And once we prove out the technology in that marketplace, then we'll try to move it to everybody. And we will likely, with the Canadian angle, do that in Canada, who has a national health care program where they'll pay for it and we'll have to have a vigorous fight here with the insurance companies to make them accept it. Well, 2014, we're supposed to get our national health care here. Would you see that in a way that we would have tools and resources available for di early diagnostics for cancer for the masses in the States? Or uh, No, probably not this next six, seven years. I'm going to start a process to have that dialogue now. Um, but we have not yet proven the model. We're very close after a decade and we'll prove the model. When we prove the model two things will happen. One is industry will get involved which will bring far more talent and money to this issue and we will begin to uh, move the general awareness of this opportunity because in my opinion early diagnostics of cancer is the best way to save lives over the next 20 to 30 years. Because even if we had a wonderful drug that we discovered today, getting it into the marketplace would take forever. Right. And diagnostics take a shorter period ultimately to get in there. Um, would I love a miracle drug? Heck yeah, I'd shut down tomorrow. <laughs> Don't think it's going to happen. And so early diagnosis is the next best strategy. Well, Don, uh, being a philanthropist and financing a cancer research for, that benefits everybody is very admirable, but I'm sure just like any research, you guys are always out looking for additional capital and financing to be able to carry on the vision of bringing this early detection to everybody. If our audience is interested in participating in, in terms of uh, at some of your events or helping you in your fundraising, what's the best way to get in touch with Cannery Foundation and the work that you're doing? Thank you. Well, there's two ways. One, via email is just info at canaryfoundation.org. You can tell us what you're interested in. I, I race most of my staff. I generally answer seven out of ten of them before they do, so I'm still deep, deep into it. Uh, or you can go onto the website. There's a volunteer page if you have particular skills. Um, one thing I, I would like to say, if you don't mind, is you know we do have now a fundraiser here in the Bay Area, September 28th. It's a cycling event. 
and and there's a lot of them but our idea is we're trying to make the best single day event so if you want to go to the kids soccer game in the afternoon you can come and cycle in the morning you don't have to go to to Carmel or to Napa Valley you can go and get that done and it will help us all all of it funds the Stanford Cancer Institute and uh, our programs thereof and so uh, you can also go onto the Canary Challenge website Canary Foundation website or info at canaryfoundation.com and I'll be back on it responding to you. Well, Don, thank you so much for your time. I wish you much success in trying to do the early detection for cancer research. It's great work that you guys are doing. And at BizCloud, let us know how we can support you along the way. Thank Thanks you, so BizCloud. I appreciate it. Thanks again, Don. Cheers. Thanks for having us.